Okay guys, I'm here today with New Balance, a huge honor for me. Guys, New is one of the best set instructors at BGJFanatics.com and for those who doesn't know him, he's one of the best MMA coaches as well, especially for grappling. He has worked with a lot of like uh, MMA celebrities like Charles Sonnen and uh, many others and Ranch Couture as well. So today he's, he shot here an entire instructional about leg locks right that's called the filthy leg lock right filthy leg locks and he's going to show us here today one of the leg locks that he used from Hefner, which is my favorite position so i'm very excited to learn from him let's do it now how's it going thanks uh, there we go all right so let's throw a half guard let's go uh this up there all right so when we're here i'm not going to get too much into the half guard ex explanation but i have to protect myself from the sweep so i got to make sure that a couple things I don't want this leg to move freely. If this moves freely, that means he can get up. If this, my legs are spread, he can dive in for half guard. I gotta protect myself a little bit. I can't just like blow and go for leg lock, so to speak. So what I like to do is I turn the corner and I try to block and I try to stay heavy. The other thing I do here is I make sure I'm fighting this half of his body. I don't care so much about this half. I know everybody does, but this is the one I think is gonna be the scramble. This is more of the, uh, the underhook and pummeling. He gets an underhook, I can still beat it. But if he gets control of my wrist and he does other things, uh, I, I, he's not gonna allow me to attack him. So when I'm here, I, I try to always be on the outside. I never wanna be here where his head's in between my head and my hand, because then he's gonna come on me and all that junk. So what happens here is whether or not he's locked or he's just playing this position, it's very common, but I'm just gonna be very patient here and I'm gonna stay to the outside. Now, if his leg is strong, then I'm gonna do like a little bit of a smash where I'll just go here, and I'm gonna go and hack his leg, all right? It's just a little bit of a control kind of game. But now from this position, he's gonna go into a pickle of the circumstances here. So from this position, I'm gonna stay low and I'm gonna quickly just block. So it's gonna be like a one, two and a catch. So when I hit this now, I'm gonna re-pummel under his leg. So he's gonna be now into this game because from here, he can already tell this is gonna be bad news bears. So this is all gonna to gel together in a lot of sequences, okay? So the first most simple thing I'm gonna look for, and most of you guys have seen me do this, is I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna get off my knees, and I'm gonna head hunt. Now, I can just simply step this up, grab his head, and create some pressure. But most likely what I'm gonna do is as I'm creating this pressure, I'm gonna pull it down, and I'm gonna go around his head, okay? <laughs> Now, when he does that, I'll let this knee come around, but this knee is gonna stay in the back, and I'm just gonna bop, okay? So it's just a quick little grab. But if, if these things go wrong, these are all gonna gel together very fast. So when I hack now, I was here. But this time, a different option is when I hack, I'm gonna go in the crook. So instead of going, going, going here, and going, if he's top, he's up here, crash, crash, and going for the hip, and looking for the hip compression, I'm gonna go crash, crash, and go into the crook of the knee, uh, knee. Now this position, I'm gonna quickly lock my gable lock. So when I lock my gable lock, I wanna get pressure on his kneecap. So I go here, pressure on the kneecap. Now I suck him in tight, and remember, I'm still on this side of the house, okay? I'm gonna step my left leg back, and I'm gonna get off my knees. So my left leg's gonna go back, and I'm gonna get off my knees, and create that compression. Now, when I'm off my knees here, it's a compression lock. It's extremely painful. My secondary from this position, if he doesn't tap and I screw it up, is I'm gonna break my grip and make a fist towards the mat. I'm gonna go head on his hip and I'm gonna swim for his head. And I'm gonna start, ah. I'm gonna start to run. Okay? This hurts. <laughs> so when I'm in this position, it's a posture position, but I'm staying here. I'm making sure that I can win the hand fight and I can constantly stretch him, stretch him, and play with him here. And I gotta protect my hand, okay? He starts messing with me with his leg. I go smash, smash, and catch. Now I can go hip or I go crook. I go crook. It's a, this is a violent exchange, guys, a very violent exchange. So I'm gonna lock and I'm gonna use this twisting motion to focus him on getting him towards his hip. If I don't get off my knees, he'll keep rolling, he'll do something goofy. So as I step this leg back, he'll kind of feel my pressure. So this leg comes back and I'm forward. One, two. Oh my God, man. 
So, your first question, did, did you invent these moves or how did you learn it? I don't know. I think I came out of a great leg lock gym. Highest stand with Goker Chibichian. I think he's the best leg lock guy I've ever seen in my life. And he had a lot of these old classic catch wrestling sambo leg locks. And I think it's so. Go, this is kind of like all from catch wrestling and so. This, that, these are catch wrestling type setups, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I think I just made a lot of these things work for me because it wasn't always about falling back. You know, everybody falls back for leg lock. I just don't want to always have to do that, especially training fighters all the time. So there's plenty of leg locks on top. You don't have to fall back. As a matter of fact, I don't. I don't think I did one. I think I did one in my DVD series. All of them were top leg locks. I think I did one from the bottom. So I'm trying to open the doors and all the different leg locks that I still haven't seen yet, but I'm sure guys will get to. So maybe this will. Oh yeah, yeah. So guys, it's awesome to to have you like kind of like translating all these techniques from sumo and the catch wrestling from for us from jiu jitsu, right? And anyway, guys, there was one concept here that you talk that called my attention like very high, especially for me that like halfway a lot. So when I have him here in the halfway, this thing that he talked here that he doesn't care too much about his side, that was like a mind blowing for me because most of the times I see the guy on top always protecting this underhook, right? So it seems like he doesn't care so much for that side. He cares more for this side over here. And, and I read yeah. on you. Yeah, because if you came up for this underhook, I beat you here. I got it. So now you're back pinned, I can start to jam you. And now if I pass to the other side, I'm cross body or I can re-pummel. So you need your post. So if you come here and you start looking and you come up to your elbow and I go here, now you're not coming up anywhere. I got it. And now if I re-rip, we're playing a neat little game here. So it's, you can get that underhook and I can beat it. I got it. But if you get to that post, especially to your hand, now I'm in your game. I got it. Because you can push, pull, I'm dancing with you. I got it. If you're on that shoulder, you can't hurt me. That's why I, I got it. Well, that's amazing. Thanks so much, Sean. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Awesome.